rather than think about selling as an individual decision that has to be made on each stock that you hold, whether you've held it for one year or 40 years, rather than make it about individual target prices for each of your, let's say, 35 stocks that you hold, I encourage you and every one of us to think more holistically at a portfolio level. So, what I want you to ask yourself, and you can ask yourself this on a regular basis, it's kind of a rhetorical recurring question. Maybe once a quarter you could ask yourself this. Am I optimally invested right now for the next five years? In other words, looking over your portfolio, is your money right now exactly how you would like it to be apportioned going forward? A lot of people tend to focus too much on where their stocks were. In other words, if you have a stock that's down 70%, you're sweating it, saying, when should I exit that thing? Or maybe you have a stock that's up eight times in value, and it's taking over a big part of your portfolio, and you're sweating that, that stock. We think too much incrementally about each of the stocks in our portfolio, and not overall enough about the percentage of your money that's in each of these things. When I have a stock, and I've had them, that loses 80% of its value, I don't spend much time thinking about it at all at a portfolio-level consideration, because probably it's declined to be a very small percentage of my overall nest egg. So, what I usually think about those big losers, and again, I have more than the average bear. Uh, when I look over my portfolio, I have, I have a bunch of these. They become tax decisions. Generally, I'm looking just to sell them at the end of a year or two, and I'm probably going to net them back against capital gains that I might be taking in order to reduce the capital gains hit that particular year. Right? So, it's not at all, in this context, about the stock itself. On the other hand, if I have a stock that's done wonderfully well, it's not so much what's the right target price for that stock, it's, wow, how much of my portfolio do I now have tied to, let's say, Netflix? And that's a good rhetorical question, regardless of what that stock is for you, if you have one or more of those, that's the good rhetorical question to ask yourself about those kinds of stocks in your portfolio. So, there's a lot more I could say and probably will say in future about selling, but at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, is there a better place for your money? Any aspect of your money right now? Let bygones be bygones. If you're sitting there, like sometimes too many of us are, saying, you know, if that one just gets back to even, uh, I'll sell at some point. Or, you know, in fact, what often causes me to sell is because I have limited funds, as we all do, if there's some new stock, some new rule breaker that I like a lot. The question is, how do I get that into my portfolio? And that usually triggers a sell decision on my part. In other words, it's not so much about what I'm selling, but what I want to buy. And I'll look over and see that I'm either over apportioned in a given stock, or it might be that I'm just like, why am I still owning that company when clearly this new one that entices me is a better place for my money? So I hope this helps. I hope it helps you see at a portfolio level the real decisions that you're making as a potential seller and that you are managing toward optimization of how your money is right now going forward. Because, after all, all that really matters is what's going to happen next and how you're invested for that. 